Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a duck skipping arrow. Now this is a really ingenious arrow that was used commonly by the Klamath and Modoc Indians. It lived uh, around Klamath Lake, in the, the border between Oregon and California. Now it's really marshy down there so there obviously were a lot of waterfowl and waterfowl were definitely on the menu for those tribes. And in order to get them, they made this really cool arrow that's designed to skip across the water and hit waterfowl that are actually on the water. So this, what I'm basing this arrow on is, is some photos that I've seen online of some original Klamath arrows that are housed at the University of California in Berkeley. So let's get started. I first start a small fire. After it burns down, I carefully heat the reed so it can be straightened. Unlike bamboo, reed is quite thin and can't withstand excessive sideways bending, so straightening must be done with utmost care. Severely kinked reed cannot be straightened without breaking it, so be sure to choose only the straightest reeds for arrows. I then use a small straight flint flake to cut the reed to length by sawing a small groove all the way around the reed. Do the same for the rear of the arrow, but cut just below a joint as I'm doing here. This gives the knock much needed reinforcement and prevents it from splitting when fired. The original arrows were done the same way. The reed can then be snapped off cleanly. Grind the small end on sandstone on both sides, then carve away these thin areas to create the knock where the bowstring will fit. Use sandpaper to clean the knock after it's been carved. The front of the reed will be wrapped with sinew, so it needs to be gently scored with a flint flake so the sinew has something to grab onto. After the scoring is finished, four long but shallow lengthwise cuts are made into the front of the reed. When this end is wrapped with sinew, it will restrict the diameter of the reed and allow for a slimmer foreshaft to be inserted. Long strands of deer sinew are chewed until they're soft, then wrapped around the front of the reed. Here I'm coating the wrappings with hide glue for added strength, though this step is purely optional. The knock is also wrapped with sinew for added reinforcement and hide glue is added to seal the bindings. Once glued, set the arrow aside to let the sinew and glue dry. While the sinew and glue are drying is a great time to work on the foreshaft. This one is made of dogwood. I rough shape the point by grinding on a coarse piece of concrete, then do finer shaping with a sharp flint flake. The ring you see here will act as a hydroplane and cause the arrow to skip across the water. The foreshaft throat is carefully scraped until it fits snugly into the front of the arrow. And the arrow is checked for alignment. To waterproof the sinew bindings, pine sap glue is heated on the fire and smeared over the sinew wraps. A small stick is then used to shape the glue and ensure complete coverage. Then a stick with a red hot ember is held close to the pine sap and it's blown so the radiant heat will liquefy the glue once more to ensure complete coverage. The same is done for the knock end. Once the glue is cooled and hardened, the arrow is finished. Well, I can't just make this stuff and not test it out. So I've come to this lake in my neighborhood and I'm gonna test out this little skipper arrow and see how it works. Now I'm actually gonna be using a sinew-backed juniper bow. This is a copy of a Klamath bow that I saw in the Smithsonian. So we're gonna put this thing to the test, see how she works. The first shot worked great. The arrow skipped across the water for a significant distance. But after that, problems arose. Dang it. The light hollow reed floated great and made retrieval easy.
that shot was okay. So I've been having some trouble getting this thing to fly right. Uh, the first shot, it actually did really well. It actually skipped across the water quite a bit. But ever since then, it, the problem is it keeps diving. Um, and I think the big problem is that we don't have any fletching on the back end of this arrow, which is how the originals were done. They didn't have any feathers on the back end either. I'm not really sure how this was used, so it may not have been designed to skip a very long distance probably they may have had to shoot very close to the duck and hope that if they just aimed in front of it that um that the arrow would skip into the animal so i'm going to try a few more shots i've got some balloons with some rocks on them that i'm going to hold steady in the water and try to shoot at them uh, and see if that works Well, I've tried and tried and I cannot get this arrow to fly right. After the first shot, it just keeps diving on me. I, I have no control over this thing. Once it leaves the bow without any fletching on the back end, it's flying all kinds of crazy. And um, it's not even hitting the water flat. It's actually hitting the water like this. And so it just keeps diving underwater. So unfortunately, this test was a failure, but I suspect that these things work. Something in my setup is not right. Now, this is experimental archaeology. I'm just trying to make this thing on a whim. And they wouldn't have made those things if they weren't effective. So back to the drawing board for this, for this experiment. But um, maybe my arrow is too stiff. Maybe it's too flexible. I don't know. Um, but it's not flying off that bow properly. And that is the biggest problem that I'm running into. So, well, it was worth a shot. So it did skip the first time, which was pretty cool. But... After that, it's just been acting like a submarine. Anyway, thanks you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. As it turned out, the arrow's flight was uncontrollable and too inconsistent to be effective on ducks. I'm convinced, however, that the problem has to do with my equipment, not the design of the arrow. More experimentation is needed to determine what the problem was and what will work. Though the arrow didn't perform as I'd hoped, I'm convinced that a duck skipping arrow is an ingenious and effective design when everything is dialed in.